Good afternoon, Marie News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for March 19, 2024. And in the news this afternoon, police accused of laxity in a search for missing undertaker. Undertakers in downtown Kingston are accusing the police of dragging their feet in the investigation to locate their missing colleague, 50-year-old Jennifer Hardy Edwards, owner of Bennett's Funeral Parlor on North Street. We are frustrated with how the police are dealing with the case. It leaves us feeling disappointed at the pace authorities are carrying out their probe, said a funeral parlor owner who wished to remain anonymous. Hardy Edwards has been missing since the first week of January. It has almost been two months since she has gone missing, and I am disappointed with how the police are carrying out the probe in the case, Lydia Brand, daughter of the missing woman, told the news. The distraught family member said after several meetings with authorities, all she has received are promises. Dr. Kevin Blake takes over reins as a new police commissioner. Dr. Kevin Blake has been officially installed as Jamaica's 15th Native Commissioner of Police. Dr. Blake and outgoing Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson participated in a symbolic change of command ceremony on Monday afternoon at the Office of the Commissioner. National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang delivered the keynote address. The new commissioner's first day in office will be Tuesday, March 19. Dr. Blake is taking over the job at a time when the country recorded the most murders in a single week, with JCF statistics indicating 31 homicides committed over the period March 9 to 16. The data further reveals a total of 223 murders for the period January 1 to March 16, a near 12% reduction compared with 252 homicides recorded for the corresponding period last year. In addition to crafting new strategies to deal with the long-standing issue of crime, advocacy groups like Jamaicans for Justice say Dr. Blake should prioritize the welfare of members of the GCF. The parliamentary opposition, while congratulating the new commissioner, has urged him to ensure the police force is seen as an impartial and a professional organization. Dr. Blake joined the Jamaica Constabulary Force in 2002. He was appointed Deputy Commissioner of Police on June 1, 2020, after serving as Assistant Commissioner of Police for seven years prior. He has held several significant assignments in the JCF, including Command of Police Era 3 and 4, National Intelligence Bureau, Planning Research and Development Branch, and the Public Safety and the Traffic Enforcement Branch. He is the holder of a PhD in Sustainable Development from the University of the West Indies. Government urged to speedily resolve public sector compensation issues. Opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson is urging the government to speedily resolve the compensation issues under the new system, which has led to agitation among some groups of public sector workers. Mr. Robinson noted the concerns of the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, University of Technology, Academic Staff Union, and the Medical Consultants. Two of the groups met with the Minister of Finance over the weekend, and they say they have come away feeling satisfied with the progress. But there is no update on whether medical consultants remain restive. Members of the Association of Government Medical Consultants have indicated that they are unhappy with the current salary offer. According to the association, some consultants have been asked to take a salary cut. Speaking with the news on Monday, Mr. Robinson said the anomalies being faced by the medical consultants are affecting other public sector employees. So, for example, traveling officers is one. You have traveling officers who were taking up to 50 to 60 percent of their compensation in allowances, which were non-taxable before the review. You have now rolled up those allowances into your gross salary. So when you net it out, many of them are only marginally ahead. And in some cases, some of them are worse off. That has to be addressed. You have the issue of persons who are supervising individuals who are earning more than them. Right? So people are reporting into explain, them. Explain it. So, for example, in municipal corporations, some of the CEOs are earning less money 
than people who they have to supervise. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there have been increases and, and the, the realignment, the, re, the reduction of the different levels. So, yes, there have been positive things, but you have to address those outstanding issues because to an individual who is affected, it's yeah. is their yeah. bread and butter. Seven years of agony for a crash a victim. Yesterday, March 18, marked seven years since 44-year-old Simone Morgan narrowly escaped with her life after being involved in a serious crash while journeying from Port Royal to Kingston on a motorcycle with her friend. In an interview with the news, the East Kingston resident, who is a mother of six, reflected on the tragic incident, which not only claimed her friend's life, but left her to endure non-stop trauma. In recounting the horrific moments leading up to the crash, Morgan vividly recalls the sudden impact of a female motorist colliding with their motorcycle, which has left her with lasting physical and emotional scars. It is a scar for life, said Morgan, who sustained a broken arm among other injuries. I am so afraid of the memories because it makes inside of me feel a certain way. Morgan has faced ongoing struggles, both financially and physically, since the crash. She has been unable to finance a proper therapy, resorting to makeshift methods to alleviate the persistent pain she feels. I still feel a lot of pain in my arm because I can't afford therapy, lamented Morgan. After holding on to a bottle or a ball and try to make the pain wear out, Morgan's injured arm is still a constant reminder of the ordeal as it bears the visible scars from the crash and has limited mobility. I can't lift heavy things or do any type of strenuous work with it, she explained, agonizing over her inability to do the things that she was able to do before the crash. It took three long years before the skin and everything healed properly. To compound Morgan's situation, she is battling to get a compensation. The lawyer that was working on my case said everything was sorted out. She told me that they will offer me $5 million and I shouldn't take it. But I haven't heard anything about it again, lamented Morgan. Feeling overwhelmed by her situation, which includes caring for her children, while trying to cope with her disability, Morgan is hoping for the process of compensation to be expedited. Every time the hands hurt, I have to find a way to go to the doctor, she said, noting that the pins that were inserted as part of the treatment are still in there. Food prices up 7.7% over 12 months to February. Food prices went up by an average 7.7% for the period February 2023 to February 2024. However, looking at the price movement for the month of February alone, the Statistical Institute of Jamaica says the cost of food and non-alcoholic beverages declined by about 1.1%. The index for the group of food fell by 1.2%, while non-alcoholic beverages increased by 0.6%. The reduction in the average cost of food was primarily due to a 6.3% average fall in prices for vegetables, tubers, plantains, cooking bananas, and the pulses. Ready-made foods and other food products fell by 2.7%. This was linked to lower prices for agricultural produce such as cabbage, carrot, escalion, tomato, sweet potato, and yam. The reduction in the cost of food in the month of February was moderated by increases in the index for the other classes, notably fruits and the nuts, which rose by 